Good morning, everyone. In the previous class, we have started with the uh, studying the properties of the system. Today, let us continue with that point. Let me start by sharing my screen. Okay, so uh, we have seen some of the properties such as memory and based on that, we have defined our system as a memoryless system or static system and the system that will require memory is a dynamic system. Okay, then we have seen another uh, property of the system that is invertibility. And based on that property, we have classified our system as the invertible system and non-invertible system. Third property that we have studied was causality and based on that, we have classified the systems as causal system and non-causal system. Okay, today let us start with the another property that is stability. Uh, whatever are the systems uh, that are designed to process the signal must be stable. And in stability studies, the property most often required is boundness. Okay, a positive type signal UTS said to be bounded if it does not go to infinity. So if we are considering the stability of the system, basically we are interested in BIBO stability. Where BIBO stands for bounded input and bounded output system. The system to which we are going to apply the signal if that input signal is bounded and in response to that the signal is generating some output and if that output is also a bounded output then we will say that our system is a stable system and if the system is not generating the output that is bounded then in that case, we will say that the system is not BIBO stable. Okay, here you can see the waveform uh, of the inputs and some of the outputs. Here you can see that this is the input signal. With respect to the time, this is a bounded signal. And if the output that is being generated, that is uh, represented over here, if this output is also bounded, then we will say that the system is a stable. But if in case the output is not bounded in that case we will consider that our system is an unstable system right for checking the stability of the any system let us say uh, let us consider a value mx we are going to say apply the signal xn and this xn is having the maximum possible value uh, is mx which is less than infinity this signal we are going to apply as an input to our system, this Xn, which is having the maximum or the upper limit as Mx. And let us say this signal is going to generate an output Yn, right? Now, if this output Yn is less, is having the highest possible value that is given by Mb. And if this My is less than infinity, then in that case, we will say that the system is a bounded system, right? So for defining the bounded input, we have assumed that the signal is having the maximum possible, possible value given as mx and this signal is generating the output which is having the maximum possible value my and this mx as well as this my both are uh, having the values that are less than infinity. So if our signal or if our system is satisfying this property, we will say that the system is a stable system. And if in any case, if this output is extending towards infinity, in that case, we will say that system is an unstable system. Let us check this property for some of the systems. First system that we are going to consider over here is moving average system. We know that the expression for moving average system is by n, which is equals to the average of three consecutive samples. x of n minus 2 and we will take the average of these three 
Okay, so this is the output expression of this signal, uh, this system. To this system, let us say we are going to apply the bounded input. Bounded input means we are going to apply the signal Xn, which is having the highest possible value Mx. Okay, so the value, the highest possible value for this Xn will be Mx. Similarly, if I am considering x of n minus 1, this will again will be having the highest possible value that will be mx or x of n minus 2 will be having the highest possible value mx with us since all of these three are considered to be the bounded input signal. They may not have any value which is greater than mx. So, if we are going to calculate the yn, then this yn will be less than or equals to one third of mx which is the highest possible value for xn plus if we are going to give the highest value for this x of n minus 1 that will again be mx and x of n minus 2 will also be mx. So this yn cannot be greater than the summation of these three and taking their average. So this yn is less than or equals to one third of thrice of mx. Okay this three will cancel out and yn will always be less than or equals to mx and mx we have assumed earlier that this mx is less than infinity. So here we will say that since yn cannot have a value that is greater than this mx uh, and this mx since it is less than infinity therefore yn will be having uh, the value highest possible value uh, mx which is less than infinity and therefore this is going to provide us the bounded output and since this system is providing us the bounded output we will say that this system is an stable system okay okay let us take another example. We are having a system which is defined by the relationship yn which is equals to y square of n minus 1 plus x of n. Now the input that is going we are going to give as an input to this system xn this is nothing but some constant c multiplied with del n. And we will assume that initially this system is at rest that is y of minus 1 is equals to 0. Now we have to check for the stability of this system. For checking the stability of this system, let us try to find some of the values of y. We will start by calculating the value of y of 0. Since initially the system is rest that means till y of minus 1 we will be getting an output that is equals to 0. Now, if we have to calculate y of 0, that will be equals to y square. We will substitute n is equals to 0. So, we are going to get y of y square of minus 1 plus x of 0. Okay. Which, on the other hand, is equals to initially the system is assumed to be at rest. So, y square of minus 1 will be 0. And x n is nothing but c del n and x of 0 will be c del of 0. Now here this is delta function we know that delta function is a function which is having a value of 1 when n is equals to 0 and it is 0 otherwise. So here by substituting this value of del 0 we are going to get y0 equals to c. Similarly, if we want to calculate y of 1, that will be equals to y square. Now, we will substitute n is equals to 1. So, 1 minus 1 is 0 plus x of 1. This is equals to y0. We have calculated here as c. So, this will become c square plus c del of 1. And this delta function is equals to 0 for n is equals to 1. Therefore, this term will vanish and we will get y1 is equals to c square. Similarly, if we'll try to find the value of y2, that will be y square substituting the value of n equals to 2 in this expression, 2 minus 1 is 1 plus x of 2. This is equals to y square of 1. y1 we have calculated as c square. So this will become c raised to the power 4 plus c del of 2 which on the other hand is equals to 0. Therefore, y of 2 
will become c raised to the power 4. If we will try to find y of 3, that will be y square of 2 plus x of 3. That will be substituting the value of y2 as c raised to the power 4. This will become c raised to the power 8 plus c del of 3, which is equals to 0. So, we will get c raised to the power 8. Here, if you observe the value of y's, we are getting the outputs as c, c square, c raised to the power 4, c raised to the power 8 and so on. This output is going on increasing and therefore this output is unbounded output and we will say that our system is an unstable system. Okay. Coming to the next property, that property is, is time invariance. And based on this property, we will classify our system as time variant system and time invariant system. We will discuss it in next class. Thank you.